see that this metal is just completely gone and rotted. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Auto Technic, and today we'll be addressing the rustic floors, the seats, and the seat belts in my Barn Find 72 Chevelle. So let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Did you call the floors rustic? Yes, I did. Appropriate. All right, so here is the situation. We've been tootling this car around the neighborhood as we've been working through some issues. And you can see our temporary hope and dream of a patch for this bench seat. I gotta say, it is absolutely hammered. So you can see we have crammed some foam in there. We had a blanket on it. I had some cardboard so it wouldn't go through. And you can see that I was essentially just sitting on the springs here. Um, there's nothing left of it. And the more that we've been getting in and out of this seat, it just continues to fall apart and get much, much worse. In addition, I don't think we have a complete set of seat belts in here. Um, so we don't have the option to even get buckled up in here. And on top of that, we have our floor rust, which we knew was there when we purchased the car, but from us getting in and out of it, you can see that we've been beating it up and it is getting a lot worse. One of the other big issues is the seat is frozen on the seat sliders, so I can't adjust it forward and back, meaning I can't even get the rear bolts in for the bench seat. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> you remember when we got the car, the seat was even bolted down and you yeah. kept falling backwards in it. Mm -hmm. So we did bolt it down in the front, but we need to address that. We have a car show that we're going to be going to this weekend. We have a little bit of a drive. A, this bench seat's ugly. It's yeah. uncomfortable for me to sit on. We don't have seat belts and I'd like to address the floor. Yeah. So where we're going to be headed with Trevor is the first thing we need to worry about is we need to go ahead and take this bench seat out. And the back seat? We'll pop the back seat out because we need to assess the floor. We need to take care of that rust first. Yeah. Then once we have that under control, we can work on the solution for the bench seat and the seat belts. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and get this bench seat ripped out for what I hope to be the last time to be done with this dirty, ugly thing. Right, guys we got the bench seat out and i can tell you that trevor and i were it's both ugly. yeah we're glad to see that go aren't we yeah we took advantage and popped out the back seat as well and lo and behold behind the back seat i totally forgot because we've had it out once before but we do have a complete set of seat belts back there mm -hmm. they need a lot of tlc they need to get cleaned up so mm -hmm. we'll see if we can bring those back so we got all the seats out and we took advantage since those were out we went ahead and vacuumed it but now we can show you some of the other issues that we're dealing with here which we were aware of and that is our rust so you can see we got some pretty good significant rust you can see even back here in the rear seat pan it is quite rotted out so we're gonna go ahead and do some temporary repairs to all this rust now we know it's not necessarily the right way to get that done and down the road we are going to go ahead and do the proper rust repairs i haven't decided yet if i'm going to do floor halves and a seat pan or an entire floor because our rockers are really good but really the kind of the game plan the loose game plan we have is we want to be able to drive the car around the summer we're mm -hmm. going to do some more mechanical work during the winter when we can't really drive it because of weather and then next summer we'd like to drive it as well mm -hmm. so really need to address the floor especially here on the driver's side this hole wasn't nearly as big when we bought the car and then from us getting in and out of it, you can see it's just getting a lot worse and getting beat up. So the game plan that we have here today, Trevor, we want to go ahead and preserve what is left of this floor. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to do some rude and crude patches to get it sealed up and just kind of keep it from getting beat up. And hopefully it'll last, you know, longer or last long enough to when we go ahead and get the floor repaired. Because because what we want to do is we want to make sure that we stop the rust that's there now from growing any further. Mm -hmm. Trevor's already gone ahead, got everything vacuumed out. I think 
I'm gonna go ahead and get my air saw and I'm gonna cut some of these really, really loose pieces out. There's no point in having them there and kind of get us to a little bit more of a solid base. And then we'll just go ahead and address the surface rust. All right. All right, Trevor, the proper way to repair rust is to remove all of this metal that has this rust. This right here you can see is structural rust. It's really gotten into the meat of the metal. This stuff up here is a little bit more surface rust where it's not really affecting it that much. We don't want the rust to grow and get into the rocker, which it hasn't yet. So we want to do things to prevent that. But these really bad areas where they're just really rotted out and I can pretty much just push it down. There's no point in keeping those there. We can't really stop that rust. We're just going to cut these sections out real quick. We're just going to use a quick air saw. I already checked underneath. We have no lines. And since this metal is so rusted and so thin, this is going to just slice through it like butter. how bad that is yeah and this right here your cross brace for your floors right there uh, and that seems pretty good so we just want to get this section of floor out right. see the floor moves so much it doesn't even cut see here see how that metal is a lot thicker and it has yeah. more this metal is pretty decent right there actually but you can see that this metal is just completely gone and rotted mm -hmm. we're just going to cut these sections out the rust is actually quite a bit worse on this car on the driver's side not the passenger mm -hmm. i don't think we need to do this on the passenger side so we're going to continue to get the rear seat tray part out and this part up underneath the driver out and then we're going to address the surface rust all right There's the frame right there. See how it keeps growing right there and I cut it? Mm -hmm. Did you get it? I think that's it. I've got a we got to be smart and stop before we cut the entire car apart. Yeah. So, all right, let's go ahead and vacuum it out one more time. All right. Well, here is the few pieces that came out that were solid. The rest of it just kind of churned in the crumbs and fell out and did my best not to let. What are you doing? Wow. All right. So I did my best not to have mission creep where I just got cut, you know, crazy cutting and I have nothing left. So this was obviously the most significant section and got all that cut out it's still a little questionable in these areas but i think we'll be able to go ahead and weld to those got this section out and luckily the cross braces where the seat and seat belts bolt on are still pretty good back here in this real seat panning see you got all that cut out so we got to cut far enough back where we should have some decent metal that we can go ahead and work with with our patch panels so once we got done cutting everything out trevor and i grabbed some wire wheels on a drill and just kind of went through and got the big chunks of the surface rust off again we wanted to be careful of mission creep and not get too crazy with it just go ahead and gave it a good scuff so that way we got the big loose flaky stuff off and the really bad stuff and that's going to go ahead and get us set up for the next step which is the coating that we're going to put on this rust to go ahead and stop it where it's at and get it locked in so it's not going to continue growing and not going to get any worse than it already is mm -hmm. all right trevor to treat the rust we're just going to use this rust treatment and we go ahead and just spray it on we don't have to do anything else after that it's going to chemically react with the rust and it's going to go ahead and basically turn it into a black coating that we can put paint on and that locks it in where the rust won't grow or get any worse than it is that's why we went ahead and wire wheeled everything up so that way this will stick on and bond very good but you just go like that and then we're going to give it a couple hours actually probably just let it sit overnight and it should turn the areas black and that's going to go ahead and lock the rust in now i'm not so worried about the bottom of the rust on the car because there's so much grease and grime underneath there that it's chances of it getting rusty is pretty slim and this will be good enough to hold us over until we you know 
get to actually fixing this floor the right way. Mm -hmm. So you take that, I'll take this. And so just do it, the areas in between or the whole? We're everywhere where there's the brown rust. So like right here? Like, yep, all this. I don't, yeah, all this area, pretty much this whole floor. I only have that one can, so I think we're probably gonna run out and have to go grab more. All right. So we're gonna continue spraying this down. Like I mentioned, we'll probably run to the store, grab more if we run out. We're gonna let this sit overnight and we're gonna come back tomorrow and start working on our patches. Well, Trevor's in school. I got the day off. I'm out here about to start working on the Chevelle and I normally try not to work on the Chevelle when Trevor's not around because, well, it's, it's his car and I wanna teach him all this stuff. But the fact of the matter is we have a very, very small window to get this done in order to meet our deadline for the car show. So I have no choice but to come out here and just get a little bit of, you know, the monotonous, boring stuff that Trevor won't find that interesting, get that taken care of out of the way so we can keep moving forward once he gets home from school. So you can see we got the rust converter on and it's all cured up. So it's already looking a lot better. You can see how it all darkened everything up and kind of gives it a black sheen. So while Trevor's in school, I'm gonna go ahead and whip up some templates for our patches. Go ahead and get some dimensions, cut them out of this nice little poster board here so I can go ahead and transfer that to our 22 gauge sheet metal. And that way I hopefully will have all these patch panels cut the shape and relatively fit. So that way once Trevor gets home today, we can work on getting them in. And also we're gonna to have to probably get some primer or paint on the floor before we put those patches on. Uh, just to make sure we get everything covered up and you know buried so my plan is to get this all taken care of so once trevor gets home today we can work on getting some top coating on this floor maybe if we have time and if everything's dry we might work on getting those panels welded in so i'm gonna go ahead and set you guys down start doing some templates and some cutting and shaping and forming see where we end up You guys Trevor's back from school and we can see that things have changed a little bit so I went ahead and put a coat of primer over the floor because we're gonna cover some of these areas up and I wanted a little bit of extra protection there as I discussed I went through made templates for all the patches and I got some of the patches up here and I'll come down and show you so you can see that I kind of just started to shape them and left it because as I go ahead and as we weld these in well, it'll just kind of go ahead and shape them and beat them in place. But the big main one up here, right there, makes a pretty big difference on Trevor. Yeah. And then I also made one for the floorboard on Trevor's side. We didn't cut any out, but you can see that rust right up there starting to form. I decided to leave all that floorboard in there, but I just took a piece of 22 gauge, actually 26 gauge steel, and made another one for that floorboard and that's because with us getting in and out, in and out of the car all the time eventually that's going to give and be a bigger hole mm -hmm. so we just went or i went with this thinner gauge because we don't need that much strength versus this side where there's nothing there mm -hmm. and we'll just overlay it on top of it all right i'm gonna have to take a wire drill and get that paint off and try to get it the bare metal mm -hmm. now this is going to be really tough to weld because it's really bad metal mm -hmm. and it's really windy out today uh, so we're just going to tack weld these in uh, that's really our goal. All right. So we will get started and see how it goes. All right.
forever. Yeah. What are you thinking of your floor now? I'm wondering where all this is. All what? All the black spots. The black? Well, I went ahead and cleaned up the welds from last night, and I was out of the gray primer. I only mm -hmm. had black primer, so I put black primer on all of our patches in anticipation for the next steps. All right. We need to seam seal them, but right. I think before we seam seal them, we should go ahead and address the seats. All right. So you want to show everyone at home what we got going on for seats? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Bucket seats. Bucket seats. So when Trevor was eyeballing his grandfather's Chevelle and we we're making comparisons, bucket seats were one of the first things on his list of wants and wishes. Mm -hmm. And I am surprised at how much people want for bucket seats these days. It's insane. Wow. I always figured that bucket seats were going to be far, far down our list of priorities, but we just happened to stumble across this deal. There's a local seller selling these two bucket seats and well, they're pretty rough. They're basically rebuildable cores, but we were able to get these for essentially the price of a bench seat. Wow. And we're in need of a seat. So we snagged those and you can see we got brackets and that's where we're at now. Before I put the seam sealer into the car, we need to get the seat brackets positioned into the floor of the car and we have to weld those in All right once those are welded in we can then go ahead and seam seal all of our patches and then get the floor painted right. and then get the buckets mounted for good all right, all right? with these buckets though we kind of need to use these seats themselves to position the seat brackets mm -hmm. so i think today's game plan get the brackets bolted to the bottom of the seats get them positioned in the car and then i will work on welding the seat brackets to the floor Right. And while I'm doing that, and when the buckets are out of the car, you can go ahead and give these things a very good scrub down because they're real dirty and disgusting. All right. So here's the deal. We put the seats in with the brackets, and we were kind of fussing around with the seats, and there was really no definitive way to make sure that they're square and parallel. Mm -hmm. The only mounting point that you reuse when you do this conversion is this outer rear mounting point back here. And then the brackets you have to weld in and locate. So essentially, this is our only known point in the car the, where the seats go, and it's the same left to right. Mm -hmm. So I figured we could be a little bit smarter about this. And I put up a laser level up on the roof, and I'm shooting the line down dead center of both of these holes on left and right of the car. And I know that the rear bolts on the brackets need to be dead center on that line. So that gives me that point in the car where they need to be actually forward and back. And I also know that the outside mounting holes of the rear seat rails on either side are 14 inches from the center of the hole, the center of the hole. So I can measure from this hole to our stud, 14 inches, get that on the laser line. And I know that this stud is where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And I took a, already took the opportunity and prepped the metal, but I did a small little tack weld on that back corner. So my plan now is we can go ahead and put the seats in and we have two permanently fixed points for the rear bolts. And that's gonna make the seats parallel and consistent on either side. And then we can just go ahead and I can tack weld the front of the brackets in. We'll unbolt the seats and then we'll weld them all the way up. And I hope that they're gonna be symmetrical, even and parallel. And this is a lot quicker way than the other way where I was trying to measure off the seat rail to the pinch weld and we all know this car from the 70s isn't that consistent so those measurements mm -hmm. are all over the place and on top of it our seats are worn out mm -hmm. so it's hard to get a square measurement so I think this is the best chance we're going to go ahead place the seats in here get them tacked in we'll bring you guys back and let you know how this uh, method ended up working out all right Trevor are those straight and square enough for you yeah how did you get that seat all set up without having a stopper? Oh, <laughs> I grabbed a rock from the driveway and stuck it under where the stopper goes. I'll show you. So what Trevor's talking about is the stopper for the backrest on the driver's seat is missing. So it was leaning too far backwards. If I can I hold that, Trevor. So I just stuck a rock in there because the stoppers are actually just a piece of uh, really dense rubber that sits oh. under there. So I just found the right size rock. All right. And that fixed that problem. So because that was missing the stopper, that backrest was leaning further back than the other side. 
which was making it hard to get everything lined up. But after tack welding the back of the inside bracket in on either side, getting the seat's position, getting the track on either side of the seat at the same distance, you can see that they're in there. They are leaning a little bit back because they're not attached at the front and with the backrests up, they're tilting back. But they're pretty straight, square, and symmetrical. Considering that these brackets are only temporary because we're gonna have to put a floor in this car so they're coming back out, I think for what we're doing here, that's plenty good. So with the seats, I'll just go ahead and push them forward. You can see on that bracket there, hit a couple tack welds on both fronts. Then I'm gonna go ahead, remove the seats from the car, hand them over to this guy. He's gonna go ahead and clean them. And then I'm gonna continue finish welding the brackets into the car. All right. Well, here's what we ended up with. You can see that we went ahead and got some paint on it. Mm -hmm. So once everything seems sealed and painted, it doesn't look that obvious on how we went ahead and got just those straight plain Jane patches in. Um, but I think it's gonna do the trick. In all reality, all we need this floor to do is we just need this to hold up for this summer mm -hmm. and next summer. So we're going to do some other bigger jobs of the car during this winter, but we're going to keep the car running and drivable so that way we can enjoy it all this summer. We'll have the car down during the winter, probably work on the engine and transmission. Mm -hmm. And then next summer, we're going to go ahead and enjoy the car again, do some car shows and then cruise it around. Yep. And at the end of that summer, that's when the car is coming apart. The body's going to come off the frame and we're going to address these floors properly. Mm -hmm. So during the process, I asked Trevor what he thought of these repairs and his words were that it's very budgeted, which I think is a very polite way of putting it. Um, I stressed to him during the whole time we did these repairs that, well, these are really aren't repairs. These are just temporary fixes to get us through. Um, it looks pretty decent. So we're going to go ahead, throw the seats in to finish us off and it will look a whole lot better than it did before especially with those buckets. I know Trevor's excited and we did a couple things to the bucket seats that we're excited to show you and the back bench seat. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and get those thrown in. We're going to get some new seat belts thrown in on the existing mounting points of the seat belts. Yep. We'll bring your guys right back and show you the finished product. All right. All right. Here's our finished product. And you can see that we went ahead and threw some cheapy seat covers over the seats and the back seat just to clean things up. Although these front seats were in a lot better shape than our buck or bench seat that we had in the car, on the passenger side, the vinyl was splitting and tearing on the bottom pretty bad. So I'm hopeful that these seat covers will kind of minimize that and prevent the issue we had with our factory bench seat and give us a little bit of life in these seats before we go through and rebuild them. Kind of the same story for the back seat. Again, just a cheapy cover, got that over there. Went with a cheap set, simple seat belts here. We don't have the retractors on the outside, and that's because I'm probably gonna go ahead and put in a set of three-point belts, a uh, more modern style belt up there. And I couldn't really decide on that right now, and we just needed something, so I went with that. And I figure, worst case scenario, I might be able to move these for the rear seat, but these straps are pretty long, I'm not too sure. Trevor. Yeah. Why don't you hop in your um, new seats and tell me what you think. feels a lot better a lot better yeah more comfortable mm -hmm. now you have the next problem you're learning the problem of modifying a car and that's your big gaping space you have there in between the two seats 
Yep. Where there's no console. Mm -hmm. So you have to decide what you want to do there. Yep. But we got a good enough deal on these seats. It's hard to say no. Mm -hmm. Way better than the bench seat. We can actually get in the car. We don't have to worry about tetanus with all the rust we had on the floor. Yeah. I actually have somewhere to put my feet so I can drive the car. Mm -hmm. It should be good to let us tootle around for a year or two. Yeah. Well, I'm quite excited. Came out pretty all right. Um, generally, this isn't the type of work I typically like to do the cars. I'm pretty OCD and like to go above and beyond, but this is good enough for what we're doing and we'll come back later and get it all addressed. But it's gonna let us hit the first car show tomorrow. Mm -hmm. First car show, and really it's gonna be the first drive drive of the car. Yeah. Because we've only tootled this thing around the neighborhood and tomorrow we got maybe a 10, 15 mile drive. Yeah. So we'll see how it does. Well, Trevor, we're one step closer, although we have a extremely long ways to go to get this car back to a, being a good car, a decent yeah. car. But anyways, we're one step closer, and really, considering where this car was a year ago, it was still sitting in a field where it had been left for 25 years. We yeah. now have it to a point where I have confidence to take it on the road. We're going to see how it does. We'll keep plucking away, doing these small tasks, making the car better step by step. By the time you're ready to drive and have your license, it should be good to go. Yeah. As always, guys, we appreciate your support. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Please be sure to like the video, drop us a comment, share it with your friends. As always, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Yeah.